Hello and welcome to this part three of this Android Studio and Kotlin tutorial series. That's a bit of a mouthful. Uh, we're continuing on with our to-do list app. In the first video, we built a bottom sheet modal where the user could enter some new information about a new task item. In the second tutorial, we built and fleshed out a recycler view. And today we're gonna to be making the data in that recycler view persistent, meaning that when the user closes the app and then reopens it, all of that information is remembered. So we're gonna be making our data persistent using a room database. This is a more modern way of storing our data as opposed to something like an SQLite database. I have already created a tutorial using SQLite that I'll leave a link in the description to that video if you wanna check it out. But yeah, today we're using room, which actually ties in with our view model stuff, which is pretty cool. Um, so yeah, let's get started. So first things first, we need to implement a lot of things in our build gradle. So just to save a little bit of time, I have pre-filled this text file and I'm just gonna open up our build gradle and paste it into our dependencies. So below the test are new ones and at the top there I've just bumped the version numbers. And while we're in our build grader, we need to implement the plugin of Kotlin CapT. And then I'm just gonna put up our compile SDK and our target SDK to 33. And then we're gonna head into our task item. So our task item is going to be a room entity with a table name of task item table. Each one of our attributes needs to have some column info. So we're just gonna give the name the name of each one of our variables. So we're going to paste that down. So the first one name is name and then the next one is description. And then we're going to add a due time string. So we can't actually store local time or local date in a room database. So what we're gonna do is just store these values as a string and then convert them into a local date or a local time when we need to use them. The final one, we're going to remove the column info and because this is gonna be our primary key, we're gonna set auto generate equal to true. So it's just gonna bump the ID each time. And then we're just gonna initialize it to be an integer, which is equal to zero. And just fixing that up to be completed date string. And so now that we've changed the name of our completed date string, we've got an error here on our completed date and we're gonna turn this into a function which returns a local date. And if our completed date string is null, put null into our local date. Otherwise we want to pass the string of our completed date into a local date. And we're gonna do the same thing for our due time, except this one obviously is a local time. And if our due time string is null, we're gonna return null. Otherwise we're gonna pass it into a local time. And then I'm just gonna search for all of our uses of due time because they are going to be giving us errors now because we've changed it from a variable to a function. So here we're just gonna add the brackets to call the function instead of the variable. And just scrolling down inside our save action now is we want to convert our time picker time into a string. So I'm just gonna say val due time string. And if our due time is equal to null, we're gonna return null. Otherwise, we're going to, in our task item, it's probably worthwhile creating a companion object which has a time formatter as well as a date formatter. So that way, I don't think we'd necessarily need, have to do this step, but it's probably just good practice to make sure that we're using the same formatter all the time. So yeah, I'm just creating one which is an ISO time and one which is an ISO date. And now, if we, when we pass our due time and our completed date. We're gonna pass through and use our time formatter for our due time and our date formatter for our completed date. And now back in our save action, we can reference that same time formatter to format our due time. And then we just need to pass that into our task item constructor. For our update task item, we're actually gonna remove the sort of constructor style one and we're going to create one that just receives a task item. And so we're gonna create this function in our task view model. And we're gonna actually come back to this a little bit later. I think we can pretty safely comment out our update task item as well as our set completed, cause we're gonna be redoing those a little bit later on. And then we're going to say file new Kotlin class and we're going to create a task item repository. Our task item repository is going to receive a variable. 
this value is going to be a DAO, so it's a task item DAO. And we actually are going to create our own version of this. So we're going to say new Kotlin class again. We're going to call this one task item DAO. And our task item DAO is an interface and it is a of type DAO. So we're just typing an at symbol and DAO. And it's going to have a query. So this is just a basic SQL query. So select all from our task item table and then we're going to order it by ID. So if you needed to add a where statement to that, so say where it's not deleted, you could just add that after your from statement. And then we're going to below that say function all task items. This is a flow of task item. And then below that, we're going to have an insert task item. So this is going to be to insert a new task item into our database. Um, so we're going to suspend function to call our insert task item. We're going to copy and paste that down and do one for our update task item. Uh, you could also add like a delete task item um, we're not going to implement this in this tutorial, but that's where that would go. You would create a delete task item as well. Our insert, we're going to say our own conflict strategy is replace. And now back inside our task item repository, we can receive our task item down. And we're going to say val all task items is a flow of task items and just ref is equal to our task item down all task items. We're going to insert our task items. So we're going to suspend the function. So the suspend the thread and insert a task item and again just referencing our DAO and insert task items with a task item we're going to do the same thing for update task item so again just receiving a task item and updating it in our DAO and now we're going to create another column class this one is a task item database this is of type room database this is an abstract class we're going to give it an at symbol of database our entities we're just going to give it one for now so our task item class it's the first version, so version one, and expert schema for now is false. So inside our database, we're going to create an abstract function. And just to get rid of this error message, I've, I've given it curly brackets instead of an array. So it's supposed to be an array of classes. We're going to create an abstract function, which is called DAO, which is, a type, which is of our DAO. We're going to create a companion object as well, which is going to be our instance. So the instance of our database. And it's going to initially be null and it's going to be volatile and then we're going to create a function which gets our database so get database is going to return our database so if the instance is already being initialized then we're just going to return it otherwise we're going to initialize the instance of our database to do that we're going to say instance is equal to a room database builder we're going to give it our application context we're going to give it our task item database class so that's the type of database we want to create the name, we're going to give it a name of task item database. And then we're going to call the build function. And then we're going to say instance is equal to our instance. Once we've given our sort of constant instance, our instance, we're just going to return our instance. Cool. So now that we've got our database finished, we're going to create a, another Kotlin class. This is going to be our to do application. And this is going to extend application. We're going to create our, an instance of our database by calling our lazy. So this is going to be our task item get database. So this is the function we just created. So we're going to initialize our database here. And since though we have an initialized version of our database, we can also initialize a repository. And so this is not going to be private. This is going to be referenced from within our app. And so our repository, we're going to initialize it by lazy. We're going to call our task item repository and that re constructor takes a DAO and we're going to get the DAO from our database. By default, you just use the application class in your manifest, but if you want to use a custom application, you need to head into the manifest. We're going to call Android name and then to do, to do application. So now it's using our application, not just the default application. Cool, so if we head back into our task view model now, we are going to change our task items to be live data and it's going to be a list of task items. To get our list of task items, we actually need to get the repository. So we're going to pass that in through our constructor and then we're going to say repository all task items as live data. So all task items was on our repository and you can see it's giving an error because we haven't actually made it a list of task items. We made it just one task item. So I'm just going to change that here and in the DAO as well to be a list of task items. And now we're going to change our add task item to be our view model scope. We're going to launch and we're going to insert a task item based off of our repository. 
We're going to do the same thing for our update task. We can get rid of all this commented out code. Um, so our update task item is going to be equal to our view model scope launch as well, and it's going to receive a task item. And we're just going to say repository update task item and pass it through our task item. And then finally, we're just going to copy and paste that down and create our set completed again. So this is going to be the same thing, except before we update our task item, we're going to say if our task item is not completed, set our completed date string with a date formatted time of now. So our local date now with our task item date formatter. And now below our task view model class, we're going to create a task item model factory. This class is going to receive our task item repository as well, and it extends the task view model provider factory. We're going to override the create function, and we're going to say if our model class is assignable from our task view model class, then we're going to re return our task view model and pass it through our repository as the type pass through the create. And if it's not, we're going to throw an illegal state exception because you probably shouldn't get here. So an illegal argument exception. And we're just going to give an error here, say like unknown class, but it doesn't really matter what the error message is there. Cool, so just fixing up this uh, typo and we're going to head back into our new task sheet because we needed to, in our else statement, we actually need to apply the task item name as well as the description. And we're going to apply the task item due time string as well. Cool, so we can close that off and head into our main activity. And where we initialize our task view model, we're going to change this to task view model by view models. And we're going to reference that task item model factory that we just created. Uh, we're going to pass it through our application as our to do application. So we're casting it and then we're going to get our repository off of that. So I'm putting that in a brackets again and getting the repository off our application. And just need to change this to a val instead of a variable. We can remove it from our onCreate. And I think we're ready to build and run. And I can see we've got some error messages here. So in our task item DAO, we must have a query. So we're going to head back in there. And yeah, so our update, we just need to call the at update and delete for our delete. And let's try this again. And this time we haven't added the brackets to our due time. So in our task item view holder, we're just going to add a couple of brackets because we're using that function. Cool, so let's go and run this again. And this time we've loaded, so that's a good start. I'm just going to add a new task, just calling it run. And we're going to set a time of 6.25. Uh, we're going to create another task, uh, just calling this one eat. It's a pretty bad name. And then we're going to mark that as completed. We're going to close the app and reopen it and hopefully we've remembered our information and it has, so that's good. And one final test we're going to do is to uh, just change the name. So we're going to call this run fast and save that and close off the application again, just reopen that up again. And we can see that our, both our update and our insert have worked. So there you have it. That's how you implement a room database in Kotlin using Android Studio. If you found the tutorial helpful, consider giving it a like. Otherwise, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Cheers.